Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over 10 accessories to make your winter car camping or van life or SUV RVing adventures a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more doable, a little bit more pleasant. Winter camping can be tough and so these 10 accessories will make it uh, just a little bit easier all around. These also make for great gift ideas. None of these things are over $60, so uh, I think that whether you're buying for you or someone else, I think this is a good list of things to, to be aware of. I bought all of these items with my own money. I am not affiliated with these companies at all. This is not a sponsored video. These are things that I have used and, and think are worth recommending to you. The first thing I wanna show you guys today is this guy. This is a 12 volt heated travel blanket. I got it from Amazon. And all the things today, except for one, came from Amazon. I will put the links in the video description so you can go directly to those item pages, those product pages on Amazon. The one thing I didn't buy on Amazon was on Walmart or was from Walmart, and there are equivalents on Amazon. And so I'll link to all that stuff here. But this is a, like I said, a 12 volt travel blanket, has the cigarette lighter type plug here to go into uh, your, your car's cigarette lighter socket, or if you have something like a, a Goal Zero or a Jackery portable power station, this can plug right into it. I bought this particular one because it has some features that I really wanted. The first is that it has a high, medium, and low setting. And so depending on how cold you are, how much heat you want, you can adjust that. Then it also has a timer for 30, 45, and 60 minutes. And that's important because I don't necessarily want to have this thing running after I fall asleep. Now you might want that. You might want to get one that has no timer on it, but for my personal safety reasons and for not running down the car battery or the, the Goal Zero or Jackery battery, you don't want one of these things running all night because these things can draw quite a bit of power. I actually have it written down, let me tell you. So like I said, there's a low, medium, and high setting. On low, it draws 32 watts. On medium, it draws 47 watts. And on high, it draws 61 watts. So if you have a 500 watt portable power station, you could run one of these things for about 10 hours on medium. So you don't want that running all night because that would basically drain all of your battery. And so I think this is the kind of thing to use when you're just getting into your sleeping bag at night or in the morning if you want to, you know, to get extra warm before you get out of your sleeping bag. I think you turn this kind of thing on for half an hour, an hour to really warm up and then, uh, you know, get on with with your life. I've used this thing a couple times overnight and then I've also tested it out at home. Works great. Uh, it doesn't get like crazy hot, but it gets decently warm, definitely warm enough to, to keep you warm and cozy on the road. And as long as I'm here at the front of the car, I'll talk about the second accessory that I wanted to recommend to you guys. And I actually forgot it at home. I don't have it with me here. I'm half an hour away from home. I don't want to go back and get it. I'll explain it to you and I'll show some some footage of us putting it on my car or on my wife's car later, but it's uh, a car windshield cover for snow and for frost. So basically it's a piece of black material that stretches across and covers the full height and width of the windshield here. And what that does is that if it's snowing, it'll prevent the snow from building up on your windshield directly. Instead, it'll build up on the, the windshield cover then in the morning, after it's done snowing, you can just kind of pull it off and, you know, dust all the snow off easily and it's nice and clear underneath. Or if you're expecting frost on your windshield in the morning, same kind of thing. We use these things all the time. I took mine inside to, to dry it off. Uh, otherwise, it's always in my car. And so that's why I forgot it at home. But I got mine for $15 at Costco. It's called the Frost Blocker. I think it was 15 or $20, I'm not exactly sure. There are tons of them on Amazon, ranging from 15 to $30. I'll put links to a couple of them in the video description. But my wife and I, we live in an apartment complex. We do not have covered parking. And so we use these things daily in winter to cover our windshields. They work really well, and it's just a really nice thing to have to keep you from having to spend precious, very cold minutes in the morning scraping ice and snow off of your windshield. Next up is this little guy. This is a thermos. This is a actual thermos brand thermos. It's a 16 ounce thermos and it was $26 on Amazon. And I wanted one of these to take with me on my winter hikes and snowshoeing trips and cross country skiing adventures. It fits easily in a backpack because it is so skinny. It'll fit in the water bottle holder on the side of a backpack. It'll also fit in your jacket pocket. I have an interior jacket pocket right here. 
fits just fine. You know, if you want to go for a quicker, easy little hike, maybe along the river or something like that, along a path in, in town, take one of these with you. It's really nice. So the top unscrews to be the tiniest little cup. <laughs> it's a little, little mug here. And then you unscrew the top a little bit. And then pour away. Got some hot chocolate in here right now. It was boiling when I put it in a few hours ago. Let's see what it's like now. Still hot, still very hot. I actually tested this out last week. I put boiling water in it, let it sit for 24 hours. And when I checked it in 24 hours, it was still nice and warm. So works great, I'm happy with it. And it's also small enough to fit in the cup holder in your car. Nice little thermos, small enough to really fit anywhere relatively cheap. Again, links to these things will be in the video description. That was the third thing I wanted to show you, and the fourth is pretty similar in the same vein. It is a food thermos. Now this is not a thermos brand thermos. This is a Da Cool <laughs> branded thermos. And I wanted this one for food, uh, for soup, basically. That's, that's the use I had in mind for this. Screw the top off, gets you a nice little bowl Again, very small, but it is a bowl. Put that off to the side there. On the top here, there's a little spoon. It just kind of swings apart here to be a nice little stainless steel spoon. And then in the thermos itself, there's a lid part here that unscrews. There's a vent hole here to vent before you open it, open it up. I put some soup in here a couple hours ago. Still hot, I don't know if you can see it steaming, but it's, uh, I mean, that is definitely still hot. This particular food thermos comes in two sizes. I think it's a 16 ounce and 22 ounce. This is the 22 ounce, this is the bigger one. And I wanted it to fit like a larger can of, of Campbell's chunky stew or soup. Uh, the smaller one wouldn't do that, so I returned that got this one instead. Uh, I wanted to show these two things, the, the drink thermos and this thermos. And I know thermos is a brand name, but I'm gonna be calling this thermos anyway, even though it's not a thermos branded thermos. I wanted to talk about these because if you are going on just a, like an overnight camping trip in the winter and you still want hot food, these are a great way to do that. It's much easier and more pleasant to prepare the hot food and drinks at home and then bring them with you than it is to have to cook when it's freezing outside. So that's the use case I have in mind for these things. These will both keep food hot and cold for a long time. I tested this one with some soup a couple days ago. Kept the soup pretty pretty hot for about four hours, then decently warm for another eight hours. And so 12 hours later, it was lukewarm. I still would have eaten it at 12 hours. Uh, much beyond that, I don't know. But, but it'll keep your food warm enough, long enough for you to enjoy it later on in the day if you if you make it early in the morning. The next item is this thing, and this is the item that I bought at Walmart. This is an indoor-outdoor thermometer. So I like using this because I like knowing when I'm inside, when I'm sleeping inside my car at night, I like to know what the temperature is outside and what the temperature is inside. Uh, this is especially interesting for me at night before I go to bed, then also again in the morning uh, once I wake up. I like knowing how many layers of clothes I need to put on <laughs> in order to, to survive the morning. And it's just a piece of information that I like to know. I like knowing what the temperature is. And so, again, this was from Walmart, $10 at Walmart. There are ones for about $15 to $20 that are similar uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link to both the Amazon and the Walmart ones in the description. This one is super basic. They get pretty fancy. This one just says the, uh, the outdoor temperature, the indoor temperature, and the time. You can switch it between Celsius and Fahrenheit, and you can change the time, and that's about it. There are other ones that have humidity levels that uh, tell you how humid it is outside, and that's interesting too, but uh, for now I have this one that just tells you the basics. And what I like to do is keep this one inside with me, so this is the, this is the, the indoor thermometer part, and then this is the sensor readout unit. And then this thing, I added a piece of paracord and a carabiner to it so I can attach it to various things outside. Usually I attach it to the, the screw thing up here that adjusts the, the crossbars on, on the rack here. And so I can just 
loop that over like that and uh, yeah, works great. This one takes batteries. Uh, I think this, this part takes triple A's and, and this part takes double A's. I do wish now that I had one that could recharge via USB. I imagine there are some like that out there. That might be a, a good one to look for, a good thing to, to look into. But uh, even so, I mean, these batteries have lasted for months. Uh, months and months, like most of 2020, these batteries have lasted. So they do last a long time, but at the same time, I'd like to be able to recharge them easily on the road without having to worry about whether I do have batteries or not. Item number six is this guy. This is an electric hand warmer. I've had a couple of these before in the past, and I like this one the best. This one, it was, uh, let's see, let me look at my notes here, $32 on Amazon. And again, it's electric. It, uh, it has a big battery inside. It has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. So it can also be used to charge your phone if you need that functionality. It's about the size of a computer mouse and uh, a bit heavier than that. You know, it's more dense, there's more in here. And um, this thing works really well. You turn the button on, and about 30 seconds to a minute later, it's, it's warm enough to use. This one has three settings, low, medium, and high. The low and medium are, are pretty warm, uh, and the high is super hot. Like, I've never used the high one before. Uh, the low is what I mostly use, and, and I guess if, you were, if your hands were super cold, you could use the medium. The only circumstances I can imagine that you'd use the, the hot under are like, if you were wearing gloves and you needed that extra heat to penetrate through the gloves. Otherwise, if you have just bare hands, the, uh, the low and medium options will, will work just fine. Another thing I like about this one is that it has both a USB-C and a micro USB port on it. And so you can charge it with whatever USB cable you have lying around, pretty much. This brand is Okupa, and it was $32 on Amazon. And there are lots of companies making these. Uh, I do like this one. I, I do recommend that this one. They say that it'll last about 11 hours on low. I tested it out and I think I got nine hours. Is that right? Yeah, I got nine hours on low. And I'm guessing it'll get a couple hours less on medium and then a couple hours less than that on high. So I plan to use this for winter hiking. And then also I'm gonna wear this while I'm fishing in winter. This will be really useful for that. So. As far as camping goes, if you're going winter camping and um, you know you need to get out of your sleeping bag in the morning and you need to fumble with a stove or something like that, maybe your hands get cold while you're doing that, this is a good way to warm them back up again so you can have that dexterity that you, that you need with your, with your hands, with your fingers. Item number seven on the list I'm actually wearing right now. These pants are amazing. These are down pants. So these are heavily insulated pants and I love them. So I'm sure a lot of us have worn like fleece lined pants before, maybe when we go skiing, but it gets really cold here. I live in Eastern Idaho and it's been getting down into single digits at night this week. And so walking my dog in seven degree weather in the morning, you know, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow, but these pants make it so much easier. I mean, you don't even notice the cold. These were $60 on Amazon. Uh, I love them. We're going to get another pair for my wife to wear. They're just great pants. They're, they, they really do make winter not feel so bad, you know? Like, they, they really take the bite out of cold weather. And I'm talking cold weather, like single degree temperatures Fahrenheit. That's, that is cold. That is very cold. These particular ones match my, my puffy black jacket. And uh, my wife and I get a kick out of that, but really down pants have, have been a, a game changer here this winter. And we're not even that far into winter, but I can already tell that they're, they're amazing. So if you're a cold sleeper or if you, uh, you don't like being cold when you're at camp and, and just doing camp chores outside of your vehicle or outside of your tent, get a pair of these. You won't regret it. They are awesome. Accessory number eight, this shovel. This is a great little shovel. So this is a snow shovel. And it, uh, it's, it's a couple feet long. You know, it's about, about two feet long, maybe a, a tad more. I'd say it's about two feet long, but it breaks up into, into multiple pieces here. So the shovel part is down here and then the handle comes off and breaks into a couple pieces. So three pieces, very compact, very easy to store in your vehicle. And I like having this for a few different reasons. I actually used this last winter to build a snow cave and I was gonna spend the night in that snow cave. You never saw that video because my camera died. This camera does not do well in extreme cold. It's relatively moderate right now, about 
30, 35 degrees. When it gets much colder than that, this camera starts to freak out and stop recording. And so <laughs> that adventure never made it to the light of day, but I did use this shovel to dig a, dig a trench. And so if you want to build, you know, an igloo or a snow fort or something like that, this is good for that. If you need to build a level sleeping platform in the snow for your tent, it's good for that. But then as far as your car goes, this is a good thing to keep in your car for when it snows a lot. If you live in a place where it snows a lot, you can, you know, dig yourself out. You can clear the snow out from around the tires and, uh, and the doors and everything like that. And then if you're driving through snow and you get stuck in the snow, you can use this to, to clear that snow out, to clear the snow out away from, from your tire so you can move forward or move backward or however you need to go to get out of that situation. This was about $22 on Amazon. There are several brands that make this shovel, or rather there are several brands that basically slap their name, their logo on this shovel. Uh, this one does not have any logo on it, any brand name on it, but it is from Amazon. And again, it was, it was $22, $23. I've used it a few times and it's a, it's a great little shovel. You know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want to like dig a snow palace with this thing or anything like that. Like it's a relatively small shovel. It's not giant. I wouldn't want to clear my, my driveway with this, but for the kinds of things I mentioned, it's a great little shovel and it's light enough that you can take it hiking or backpacking with you. Uh, I weighed it at home, it weighs exactly one and a half pounds, so relatively lightweight. So I misspoke a little bit earlier. I said that everything was from Amazon except for one item. There are actually two items that were from Walmart and not from Amazon. The first was the indoor outdoor thermometer and the second is item number, I think nine, that I wanted to share with you. And that is kitty litter. Now, why on earth am I recommending kitty litter for you? Uh, it's a really good way to give traction to your car's tires. So again, if you're driving in the snow or some, uh, you know, some soft ice and your tires are, are struggling to find purchase, if you're stuck, you need to put something else under your tires to give you some traction to help you get out of there. You can use things like dirt. You can use the floor mats in your car. But you can also use kitty litter, and this stuff is so cheap. I mean, this was, I think, less than $2 at Walmart. I was at the, the dollar store the other day at Dollar Tree. We saw some kitty litter for a dollar. So yeah, in winter, why not have a bag of kitty litter or sand or gravel or, you know, something like that in your car? Uh, it, can, it can help you out for sure. And the last thing I want to talk about, item number 10, is in a similar vein. It's in the same category as both the, the kitty litter here, which I'm going to put down and the shovel and that it's a it's a self recovery item to help your car get out of whatever mess it's in so let me grab that and show it to you here say hello to my not so little friends here so these are they go by different names you can call them traction mats or recovery boards basically these are big honking pieces of plastic that you stick either in front of or behind your car's tires, again, to help you get purchased to get out of a stuck situation. Whether it be snow or ice or sand or mud or whatever, uh, that's what these things are made for. Now, these particular ones are pretty cheap from Amazon. These are $60, I think, is what I paid, $55 or $60 on Amazon. But these are basically knockoffs of a much more well-known brand called Max Tracks. Those are used heavily by the, the hardcore overlanding crowd. And I'm sure they're amazing. I'm sure they work really well. Uh, I'm sure they do what they were designed to do, but they're about $300. That's, if these were $50, I mean, that's six times more than these guys. And uh, these ones got decent reviews on Amazon. There were several people reviewing who said that they actually used it and it, it got the job done. I've never tried these before. I've never used these before but I'm gonna run over them right now in the car, see if they crack, uh, see if anything happens to them, see if they break or see if they do actually last and see if they do, uh, you know, withstand the weight of my car here. Let's 
let's see if that worked here. Yeah, this one's fine. Yeah, this one too. And I didn't hear any cracking or anything. I think we're good. These boards are, they're, they're nesting a little bit and I'm guessing that's maybe, I don't know, three and a half or four inches thick when they're both together like that. Again, probably not the highest quality recovery boards or traction mats out there, but they got good reviews. They survived my car driving over it, over them a couple times. If I were to use these things every day, I'd probably want to spend the, the $300 to get the super nice and, and probably more durable ones. But for just emergency purposes, I mean, that's why I got these, just in case, you know. For that purpose, I think that these are, are probably fine. I think they'll, they'll do the job. I plan on carrying them in the, the cargo box up here on top of my car. And uh, they also have, have holes in them so you can mount them to, to the crossbars on top of your car or, you know, people do all sorts of things with these. You could store them in your car if you have the room to do that. But uh, like I said, I'm going to put them in the cargo box so that I don't have to worry about them. They don't get in the way, but uh, they'll still be there if I need them. And that'll do it. Those are the 10 winter car camping accessories that I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what winter car camping accessories you recommend so I can take a look at those and maybe I'll pick them up and make another video like this next year. And uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.